first thing you want to do is remove this hardware from your box. You're going to need a very small Phillips screwdriver. Now time to paint our box. We will start on the inside. Hardware is off. And what we're going to do, I'm going to add a coat of the white gesso first because it helps the primary paint adhere a little bit better. And they're both white, so you can't go wrong. Everything that I'm using is going to be in the description with the link to purchase. Your box is now painted white. And I left the inside unpainted because I think I'm going to put a nice piece of red felt or red velvet inside since it's going to be a jewelry box but the top was painted and we're going to decoupage the top of that now other items you're definitely going to need we took the hardware the original hardware off of this box and we're going to replace it with wood pile that's the name brand purchased at Hobby Lobby or Amazon. I'll have the link for you. You're going to need new hardware for the hinges in the back. Well, they have silver as well. I'm also going to get a stencil and do some leaf marks on the side. I found this from Folk Art as well. And I'm going to use this here right along the side. And how to do that we're going to stencil it on with a nice flexible molding paste and I'm going to tint it this moss green color first just makes it a little easier all right let's get started first thing we're going to do after you paint it is we're going to put a layer of the Mod Podge let me set this aside Get your Mod Podge and you're going to put a nice layer, not real thick, but not too thin, on the very top where you're going to place the napkin you chose. I'm going to use rice paper that I purchased from, I believe, a seller on Amazon. I'll have the, the link for you. And it's this beautiful rose color. I think it's perfect for Mother's Day. Okay. So what we're going to do... So I'm going to Mod Podge the bottom. We're going to let that dry completely. Then we're going to place the napkin on with our parchment paper sheet. And we're going to iron that baby right on. So there's absolutely no wrinkles. These, I can't put it onto this to show you, but these beautiful little corners. And each one is going to go on the sides. Now that our glue is dried, it's time to put the rice paper or your napkin on top. Grab your parchment paper, place it directly on top of your napkin, have your iron set to medium, absolutely no steam. Cannot have steam on the iron or you'll create bubbles. Go over the top. And just let the glue do its magic and stick to the box. Let's check it. And it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Very nice. This tiny little bit that's up top here frayed, I'm going to get a little file and I'm going to go in a downward motion all the way around because I really don't want that there. So let's take care of that now. And just go in the same position, or just go in the same direction and say it just comes off real simple. And actually it roughs it up the edges a little bit because I want to give it a little bit of a vintage look with my 
um, alcohol ink pads, the Distress Inks by Jim Holtz. It just adds a nice little extra touch. You don't have to, but I'm just showing you little tricks that I do to give it an older look. The decoupage is complete. Not a wrinkle in sight. I love it. We are going to glaze this later. I'm not sure what with yet, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Next, what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of color to the sides of the box on the top and the bottom. Not a lot. So what I've chosen to use is this new folk art paint, terracotta it's called, and I chose the Misa Pink. And it's a little bit of a textured paint, same as any acrylic paint, it's just textured a little bit. And how we're gonna apply that is gonna get my paper plate and a paper towel. I'm gonna to use the larger stencil brush and if you do not have one of these, you can use a smaller one. They sell them right at any craft store, and these will also be in the description with a link to purchase. If you don't have it, go ahead and use like any old paintbrush, but make sure it's like really harsh, not a soft one. Because you want it to, I'm gonna make it have a little bit of a streaky look. So we're going to just dab tiny bit on here about that much then we're going to go ahead and dab it on to the napkin to get most of it off I just want it to have a very faint coloring so we're going to start in the back and just start at the edge and just real lightly Go across like that. And I like that. It's just very subtle. That's what we're going for. Make sure most of it is off of the brush. And just continue. And I'm not going to worry about doing the edges because I have a different idea for the edges. And you're going to grab the front of your box. And I'm just going to re-dab it onto the paper towel. Perfect. Not a lot of wood here, so you shouldn't have to redip. Okay, next. I think we're going to go ahead and stencil the greenery around the edges. And I'm going to pre color it first. We're going to be using that paste, the flexible molding paste. I use Liquitex, you can use any store brand. Okay, another paper plate. We're going to put this aside for a second and we're going to go ahead and fold this in half in case I need it. You're going to need a little plastic knife, paper plate, the color of the green that we're going to use. This is also from folk art. I'm going to use a moss green. This is also a textured one. Go ahead and use a regular basic acrylic paint. It doesn't matter. So we're going to get some of this and we're going to put it right on the plate. Make sure you have enough. Then we're going to add the color. Nice texture to it too. Okay, let's 
Let's see how this works. Just mix it around. If you've never put molding paste on one of your projects with a stencil before, go ahead, please practice on another piece of plain wood. The tricky part, we can't attach it yet. The closure that we have not attached yet, you wanna make sure it doesn't go over it. Or better yet, we'll just make a little note or a little notch right where the hole is with the pencil. Okay, so right there and right there. This way I know exactly where the stencil is going to go. I'll put it in opposite directions this way and then going this way yeah that's perfect so it's going to be one two three four five six six times you're going to be applying this and you're going to have to wash this in between every time so I'm going to get a little piece of tape I'm gonna just use the basic painter's tape because it comes off pretty easy. And that's what we need. And you don't wanna to put too much tape because you don't wanna mess with it too much. Is that and you risk the paste moving all over. So, pencil marks are there. This is gonna go right there. Line it up. Be sure to remember exactly where you have it so it matches the other side when you flip it over. So I'm going to put a piece of tape here. Very lightly because i got to take it off immediately. It's not going to stay on. Make sure it's nice and flat against the wood. You don't want any real big gaps because then the paste might go underneath. Ooh, I put that on too, a little too late. Get on there and stay. Okay. And the stencil should just be nice and even at the edge there. And like I said, if you don't want to do this, it's your first box. You do not have to. Practice on something else first a few times before you put it on your original project. Okay. We're just going to get a little tiny bit. Not a lot. About that much. And you're simply going to go right over, pressing just a little bit. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. It jumped on me. I hope it doesn't mess it up. Go right across and press. I got it on the edge but that's okay. And then get it off. Not too bad. Ooh, I thought I messed it up. Okay so now what you have to do the tedious part. This needs to be washed in between each one.
next thing that you want to do is varnish. So I'm just going to use your basic gloss varnish. You can use anything you like. And we're going to do the entire box. Be sure to let this dry completely. Now that our varnish is dry, it is time to put our hardware on. And everything is going to be in the description below. These come in antique brass, um, gold, silver toned. I like the antique brass. Just a little dab. Nothing too much. And the girl glue dries pretty quickly. Doesn't that look beautiful? What a difference. And I decided to add this antique brass butterfly. I don't want to put anything else because I think it's going to take away. You can add anything that you like. You can put silk flowers, some greenery, anything to make it your own style. Right there. Gorgeous. And I'm gonna put on the hook and the feet and the new hinges on the back. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished.